Well, for every kid who hopes to turn a love of hockey into a career, one thing's for sure, they have to start young. But that won't guarantee they'll make it to the pros. They just don't tell that to some of their parents. As video journalist Peter Wall found out, some of them get pretty intense. It's day three at one of the most important AAA Pee Wee tournaments of the year. And if the team in black from Vaughan, Ontario doesn't win this game, they're out. Mitch, would you hit the net? Come on, who's that? Paul Marner's 12 year old, Mitch, is the captain, number 87. If we win this game, we get to head to the quarterfinals, so this is a huge game. Marner isn't just any hockey dad, he's the father of one of the best players around. And at a tournament like this, he takes every chance he can to make his son better, even shooting video of Mitch's games to review later. Oh, there you go, Mitch. No, he can't do that. Not in a game like this. Being a hockey parent at this level is a huge commitment. On this weekend, the tournament's in Michigan, and Marner's taken two days off work to be here. Watching his son is a part-time job in itself. Uh, probably 15 to 20 hours out of a week would be dedicated to driving, you know, watching the practice, the games, back and forth. So it's about 20 hours for me. Again, I only have the one. Judy McLeod has three hockey-playing kids. They all play AAA at different levels. Her son Mikey is number nine for the Pee Wee Toronto Marlies. I spend pretty much every afternoon, evening, every day, and pretty much all weekend driving. I never, ever get a night off. We have hockey every single day. Move it, move it, go Mikey! For parents like Judy and Paul, it's not just their time they're giving, it's their money too. Being a hockey parent for kids at any level can be expensive, but at this level, well, it's through the roof. My husband and I worked out all three kids, how much we actually paid for them, and it was, uh, it was about $25,000 a year. The total, I'm going to say, is going to be about fifteen dollars to $18,000. All of which begs the question, why do it? Well, I do it because, obviously, my son loves to play more than anything, and if uh, he decided it was soccer, we'd be at a soccer field. You know, it started out, you put your kids in, you know, a little tiny squirt tight hockey. They excel at it and they love it and all of a sudden it seems like you wake up and you're, this is all you're doing. Stay on! Let's go! So with parents investing a lot of money and a lot of time, it's not you hard ready? to see why things can get intense. That's a trip! Come on! I think that there's, you know, there's certainly a lot of parents that, you know, never played competitive sports themselves and are really sort of doing this for themselves. You hear them talking to their kids and screaming at their kids after they've had a bad game, and I hope that I'm not that parent. Paul Marner admits he sometimes goes overboard. Oh, oh. Nick, are you kidding me? Myself, like a lot of dads, that we get probably too involved in the game. A lot of people have this uh, vision that their kid is going to go somewhere, and they get really involved in it. And uh, it's like we're living our, our, our life through our kids. And um, if we could all stay a little calmer, it'd probably be a better environment in the rink for the kids as well. Back at his son Mitch's qualifying game, it's anything but calm. Hit the net, Mitch! No, cycle it! Skate, Mitch. Come on, skate! Vaughn hangs on for a tie, enough to advance. Oh, that was a, a nail biter, boys. Meanwhile, things are very much under control for Judy Sun's team. They've only lost one game all year, and here they easily advance to the quarterfinals, where they have no trouble handling a team from St. Louis. But Vaughn has a tough quarterfinal against the top team from Chicago. Good game, hopefully. But things go badly early on. By the end of the second period, they're down 3-0. He's not skating, like, when you see him get caught like that? And just listen to what Paul Marner has to say. He's talking to his son, not the ref. You better get fucking skating, Mitch, I swear to God. The final score is 5 nothing.
You ready? Good game. Let's go. Well, listen, you played a good game in the third, but what I wanted you to do when the game was over, just start hitting guys. You know what? Game's over, right? At least let them know that they were in a game. What are you going to tell mom? That we lost. That's it? Yeah. I don't care. I'm not gonna Just lie. another game, eh, Mitch? One of another couple hundred to be played. It's the last day of the tournament. Okay, you ready to go? All right, it's a big game. And for Judy and Mikey, it's a pregame ritual. The pep talk. Every time you're on the ice, you think, I can make a difference. Okay, and you will. Okay? You're the man. <laughs> Today's the semifinals oh. and finals. The Marlies cruise through the semis. And in the finals, score early. But today, the team from Detroit is too good. Mikey and the Marlies lose. But there'll be another game next week, which means more of Judy's time and more of Judy's money. Is it all worth it? If I were starting all over again, it, knowing what I know, I don't know if I would do it all over again. But for Judy, it's too late to turn back. Mikey and his two brothers will play hockey well into June. And the driving and the bills will start again in August. For all the hopes wrapped up in hockey, the game also comes with physical danger.